Mercury may once have contained a veritable ocean of shifting, glowing molten rock. Scientists think magma flowed over the planet's surface more than 4 billion years ago. I'm Sophie, and welcome to The Countdown. Since March 2011, NASA's Messenger probe has been orbiting Mercury to gather information about the planet. Messenger's observations revealed two different types of rocks with distinct chemical compositions. To find out how Mercury's rocks formed, scientists reconstructed the minerals in a lab here on Earth. Their experiments suggest the rocks originated in an ocean of magma. The magma settled into two layers, solidified, and then erupted back out onto the planet's surface, leaving behind two distinct rock types. The whole process must have occurred shortly after Mercury's formation, about 4.5 billion years ago. NASA estimates we now have 500,000 pieces of space junk whizzing around our planet. Larger than a marble and traveling at speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour, all that junk spells danger for both astronauts and satellites. Check out this hole punched through the radiator of Space Shuttle Endeavor back in 2007. The wall of the radiator is solid aluminum, half an inch thick. The latest idea for getting rid of our space trash uses the debris's own momentum as a way to get around. The TAMU Space Sweeper with Slingsat uses two receiver cups to catch junk. Its retractable arms then change the direction of the incoming object, firing it downward into Earth's atmosphere where it can burn up. The beauty of this idea is the Slingsat can use the momentum transferred from the trash as a push-off towards its next target. According to its inventors, two engineers at Texas A&M University, the method allows the Slingsat to be smaller and more efficient and would extend its lifespan compared to a regular satellite. Three years ago, NASA launched the Solar Dynamics Observatory, a program to study the sun's magnetic field and its effect on the Earth. Recent data acquired from the observatory show several coronal mass ejections and solar eruptions. But no need to be alarmed, this doesn't pose any major threat to us. For now, just sit back and watch the spectacular images. A new Van Allen radiation belt appeared and then disappeared from Earth's orbit. Turns out the solar wind can really ruffle these rings. The Van Allen radiation belts are two rings of charged particles held in orbit around Earth by our planet's magnetic field. Last September, NASA's twin radiation storm probes launched and began to examine the rings, recording their structure. But a couple days later, they revealed a third ring between the inner and outer belts. Scientists think a burst of solar wind sent a shock wave through the belts, destroying part of the outer ring and splitting the leftovers in two, for a total of three belts. And the disturbances weren't over yet. Another shockwave blasted through in October, destroying both outer rings. That left a single radiation belt, but not for long. About a week later, a third wave coasted by and restored the original two belts. If these solar disturbances are as common as they seem, scientists will have to revamp their model of the Van Allen radiation belts. You can check out the full study in the February 28th edition of Science. A supermassive black hole, a few million times more massive than our sun, has a super spin as well. It whirls around at close to the speed of light. Spiral Galaxy NGC 1365 contains an enormous black hole, more than 3 million kilometers across. Supermassive black holes are so big, their gravity pulls in surrounding matter, creating a flat accretion disk. Those disks reflect X-ray light we can detect with instruments like NASA's New Star and the European Space Agency's XMM Newton. The black hole's spin affects this light because faster spinning holes pull their accretion disks closer. The closer the disk is to the black hole, the more it feels the effects of its gravitational pull and the more warped its reflected X-rays become. X-rays from NGC 1365's black hole are super warped. This means the black hole must be spinning incredibly fast, with its surface traveling at near light speed. 
The fast spin suggests that this black hole acquired its supermass and its superspin from one huge merger. Many small mergers could have provided its mass, but they couldn't have produced that speedy spin. You can read more in the February 27th edition of Nature. And that's your countdown. For links to all of these stories and more, visit scientificamerican.com slash the countdown. The link's in the description below. You can also subscribe to the Space Lab channel or watch another video. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick. And next week, I'll be pulling a Van Allen. And so will I. Me too. <laughs>